Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how we can use Microsoft Power Automate to calculate the number of working days between two dates. Um, so effectively the total number of days minus any weekends and minus any holidays that may fall within that time period. Um, so this is based on the Microsoft Excel formula net work days which takes um, inputs of a start date, an end date and an array of holidays and then gives you an output total number of working days. And so what I wanted to see was whether we could repeat that with, with a flow. Um, and I think I've achieved that. And where you might find this useful would be, for example, if you were writing a proposal, you might want to see, well, how many working days are, are in this, this project? And therefore, like, what's the cost going to be for our staffing? Or, you know, for billing, you want to see how many working days have people actually worked on this between the start date and the end date, etc, etc. So... Hopefully you'll get some ideas when you see this and I'd love to hear from you here how you think this might be useful um, and, and let, let me know. So like I said, I'll, I'll run you through the Excel, I'll run you through the flow and then um, hopefully it makes sense to you. So first what I've got is just an Excel um, sheet just to show how, how the functionality works and you can see here the outputs that I'm looking for. So I've got the start date and the end date and then I want to get the total days, the working days and the holidays that have been removed. And the way I'm calculating start days, just so you know that this isn't a, a pre-configured test, um, I'll, I'll be getting some random values to hopefully get this. So um, in Excel, you've got this first formula called rand between, which is a random value between the lower bound and upper bound. And for the lower bound, I'm using a start date of 1st of December 2019, the upper bound 31st of December 2020. We then have a second rand between for the end date. So again, we're using the lower bound being the start date and the upper bound being the range end date. And then the total days is this value minus this value plus one because we want to count the total number of working days inclusive of both the start and the end date. We then use the net work days formula and this is what my flow is going to try and repeat. Um, and so the net work day you can see takes a start date, an end date and then an array of holidays and I've put the holidays in here. And then last I'm just going to count how many holidays have been removed. So um, looking at does any of do any of these days are they greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the end date? So let's just refresh this a couple of times, and that looks good enough to me. So what we'll do is we'll take these values and we'll pop them into the flow, and then we'll see if the outputs match. So the first start date was the twenty seventh of March. And the end date was the 7th of June. And then for my holidays, I'm just taking a string input, but you can see here I've specified that I need it in the ISO um, 8601 format. And so um, I, in best Blue Peter Styley, have created a list earlier, so I'll just copy that across. Obviously, if you're using this in a production environment, you may be able to get your dates from multiple different sources. The key thing is being able to make sure you can format them um, in this way and then we can get them into an array. So I'm going to run this flow. This will just take a couple of seconds to run. And I click done. And go to the response. Then let's have a look at what we've got. And if I do a quick compare, we can see that the start date, 27th and 3rd, 2020, the end date is 7th of the 6th, 2020, um, the total days is 73, the working days is 48, and the holidays removed is 3. So that's perfect. It's worked exactly as we expected to, which is which is awesome. Um, so what I'll do is now I'll run you through the flow and the different steps in the flow and explain how, how it all kind of hangs together. So let's go to edit. So the first thing, like I've said, is I've set this up as a manual trigger. Obviously, you can set this to run from dynamics from from your from a power app from you know from, from whatever source you, you want the key thing is we need to have a start date an end date and then some way of capturing an array of holidays so for this i'm taking a manual input but again you could go out to um, a gov.uk api or any other publicly available api that will capture your public holidays so once we've done that what we want to do first is get that list of holidays into an array variable um, and so what I'm using here is the split expression, which just takes that comma separated list and splits it on the comma to give us an, an array. Um, and then, then we can work our way through those later on in the formula. Next, we want to get the value of the start date. So in Excel, 
Dates are stored as sequential serial numbers starting with number 1 for January 1st 1900. Um, Power Automate doesn't give us the same thing but what it does have is this ticks um, expression and so ticks give us the 100 nanosecond um, interval for a specific specified day, day so we can use that and that will give us the total tick value for the start date and then the same for the end date and then we can use that to count the number of days so all we're doing here is getting the start the tick value for the start date and then the tick value for the end date and then when we go to initialize our full days what we're doing here is we are um, subtracting the start date from the end date we're then going to divide that by 864 billion which is the number of nanosecond intervals in a day and then we're adding one day to that to give us the total number of full days between the start date and the end date hopefully that makes sense i have written this out in my blog but it's like like i said it's we're just taking the start date value off the end date value with the remainder there we're going to divide that by 864 billion and that will give us the number of days and then we're going to add one to that to make sure we're counting for the full days inclusive of the start date and end date next for the work days so we're going to start with the total number of days and then we're going to subtract off that so we're just going to set this work days integer variable to the number of full days that we've just calculated above and then for the next few steps what we're going to do is we're going to start taking off that so first we want to say well um, we know that there are seven days in a week and therefore in every seven days in a week there are two weekend days so we want to take two off um, the total number of full days divided by seven so what we're going to do is divide the number of full days by seven and then multiply that by two so um, for example in 14 days if you divide that by seven um, you get two and then multiply by two you get four and so you know then you've got four weekend days and it's just the same regardless of how many you've got so that's our first one we're going to take that off this work days value next probably could have put these next kind of five in a switch but um i haven't but you know for the sake of performance you might want to look into that so first what we're looking at is if the start date and the end date are on the same day and that's on a weekend then we want to um decrement that by one so what we're saying here is if the start date and the end date have the exact same day of the week and that day of the week is either a saturday or a sunday take one day off the total number of working days left and um, then what we're saying is if the the date range we're working with if it starts on a saturday and ends midweek we want to take those first two days off so the saturday sunday um likewise if we're excuse me if we're starting on a sunday then we're taking one off because we want to get rid of that sunday if we're starting midweek but ending on a saturday we want to roll back to the friday so we take one off and if we start midweek and end on a sunday then we want to roll back from the sunday to the, the last friday um hopefully that makes sense like i said what we're looking at here is really um what are your start dates and end dates because we're only really wanting to count those days of the week that are monday to friday and um, anything on the weekend we want to make sure we can remove that next we're just going to initialize uh, another integer um, variable called holidays to remove and so for this we're going to iterate through each of the holiday dates and check if it falls within this start date end date date range and if so we'll increment this by one so what we're saying here is if the from the holidays array if the current um, date from the holidays array is greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the end date then increment that holidays to remove by one once we've iterated through each of those we can then decrement that uh, work days value by the holidays to remove and then the final output is going to be the total days the working days and the holidays removed and then we're just going to take that start date and end date for comparison I appreciate I've kind of run through this pretty quickly so what I'll do is I'll go through the the test that we run and I'll show you actually the values we get returned so like we saw I put in the start date and the end date and then the holidays as a comma separated list so the first step was then to convert that comma separated list into an array and you can see here we've got that array of um, date elements then we converted the start date to its representative tick value which you can see here and the end date to its representative tick value which you can see here we then took this or took this off this and then uh, divided by 
864 billion, and then I had a one two, which gives us that 73 days. Then we, like I said, we started with the work days, so that value of 73, and then we took some off that. So for each full week, there are, um, so there's 20 total weekend days in here, so it's uh, 10 weeks between, between it. We had, didn't have it starting or end on the same day, so there, there was nothing to decrement by here. Um, there was nothing to decrement by here. Didn't start on a Saturday or Sunday. Um, it didn't start midweek and end on a Saturday, but it did end on a Sunday, so we took two off that value. And then the final thing was to go through the holiday dates, and if we look, we can see that we didn't have any the first, or the second date, or the third, or the fourth, but it did in the sixth and the seventh. And so we then took those final few holidays off, and that gives us our total output here, um, like I said, of 73 days, 48 working days, and three holiday days removed with our start date and our end date. And just to kind of recap in Excel, this was the same input, so 27th of March 2020, 7th of June 2020, total of 73 days, working days 48, and three holidays removed. So appreciate that's been a relatively quick run through. Um, I have a kind of more detailed blog on my website that you're welcome to read um, alongside with this, and I um, will also upload a copy of the um, the flow the flow that I created for you to download and test for yourself. Um, I'd love to hear how it goes if you, if you ever get a chance to play with this and if you test it. Um, in my testing, it's it's worked pretty consistently, but but I appreciate you know I can't have sure every edge case so. Um, Give it a shot, let me know how it works, um, and if you can think of ways to improve it, then I'd love to hear them. Um, until next time, cheerio.